Hello everybody, my name is Ace Face. Welcome back to some action in the T6 Abyss. Doing a bit of a test right here with my recording settings. I've, uh, I'm using a recording software called OBS and they've actually released a function called HDR. And HDR is a setting as far as I understand. It just makes the colors pop out more. So let me know if you notice a difference between this and how it has been previously. I think that the colors do stand out more in the in the videos I've been recording as a test, but I'm not sure. I may could be, maybe it could just be a placebo, just thinking that oh yeah, it actually is working while it's not. And well, I'm actually surprised how many um, Drekamax we see over here. <laughs> That's quite a lot of Drekamax. Let's go here towards this extraction node over here. Perhaps I should get in range because I'm my missiles are not doing a whole lot when I'm so far out. Let's see now. I can launch a missile right here. Get the missile on this dam over here. Oh, well, now how much this school get right here? I think it's very satisfying to do the T6 Abyss from time to time. Sometimes I feel like, oh, I'm really in the mood to just do some serious risk making. Sometimes I just want to do some really chill stuff. Right now, I really felt like doing some some proper risk making and a little bit of adrenaline pumping as well. And the time can get very close at times. Minus 70% great. I like seeing that minus 70% versus penalty. It'll make it go a lot smoother. Mm hmm. There are certain waves that I've had, uh, even though we had minus 70%, it's been still going pretty uh, slowly. And it makes me worry that if I were to encounter the same, wa same wave again, but in a minus 50%, it would not be that great. I think the ones that I have encountered, they went slowly with angel waves. And another one, perhaps Sancho, like Sancho did go quick, pretty quick last time I did do it, but it was another one. I think it might be the Overmind or Charybdis, probably Charybdis. Yeah, it was Charybdis because Charybdis is a very uh, long wave in the T6 Gamma. The amount of uh, HP the Charybdis gets here is crazy because of the buff to shields. But we're going through these guys very quickly. True Glavians usually go down very quickly because they have the lowest resistant explosive and, and that is reduced here in the Gamma side, so it's really great. Okay, only two more Drekavax now. Go for Nova Fury maybe, because we'll have explosive missiles that are really good against these True Glavians. See where we get right here. It's so satisfying seeing those 13 million ISK drops from an extraction node. When I'm doing the T0 to T6 Abyss series, then just now T4, that can be like two rooms of bioadaptives, and then just go for one of the extraction nodes, or even a whole of T4 site. But then here we just get it from one extraction node. It's really crazy. Okay, grab this. Oh, yes. That's the stuff I'm talking about, like 100 mil, just, okay, whatever, just 100 mil, let's get that, I'll take it, I'll take it. Okay, next wave. I don't know what we'll get here. Time seems to be good, I can see that it's not approached five minutes yet. Really great to see. We do do quite a bit less damage with the explosive missiles, but they are worth it against Triglavians, just because of them having naturally very low explosive resist. In this site, they'll have pretty much 0% explosive resist, or almost 0% just because of the weather effect. So it'll be a good idea to use these against true lavians when you can. Their thermal resistance is also pretty low too, but we've got some really good ability to do damage with the explosive missiles over here. Pop this guy right here. Reload missiles and go to the next room. Reach that under five minutes. That's how quick we were. What have we got right here? Extraction? Oh, let's go for that. Oh, perfect. We've got a bunch of rogue drone frigates. So quick. So we can just sit back and relax and take the extraction nodes. Let's see now. Do we have any snare casters? Yes, yeah, snare casters. Good to take out. Make us go a lot slower when we're moving to these extraction nodes. See if we can take them out before they even get close. Might be if they get some good shots. Sometimes my drones just randomly, my, destro my drones just decide to miss sometimes. Here they seem to be getting good hits, so that's nice to see. Sometimes the drones, the rogue drones that is, they like to get a good like kind of movement going on. Or like in a good momentum, where they're sort of like orbiting, but at the same time keeping range. So they sort of almost out-kite the drones or my Valkyries. And that is a very annoying because they say, why are you not doing damage? Why just do damage, please? And they just don't want to do any damage at all. It can also sometimes be that they're webified by the snare casters, and then it also is not a good situation because they're just always being kept at range. Take out the gaze dimmers over here. Great to see, great to see. Oh, these rogue drones following like flies. 
Could be also that the tracking pylon is assisting our drones as well. So then the application of these drones is going to be buffed by quite a big degree, doing a lot more damage. And we don't have missiles, unfortunately. Unfortunately, not ready to go. We can just have our, one of our drones go for this extraction node quickly. And that Valkyrie is taking quite a bit of damage. What do we have over here? 9 million? Okay, good, good, good. Buy that of cash over here. Oof, this buy that of cash is really far away. That's unfortunate. Is there any tachyon cloud that can maybe assist us? Sometimes these the orange clouds do look a bit like tachyon clouds, but they don't seem to be in this case. It would be great though. Just having that big boost just go 2k a second with Aguila. As if we've got an MWD, even faster than MWD actually. We used to use an MWD on Aguila. Made lots of videos about doing those in electrical sites before T5. It was really good, but using an MWD quite can be quite limiting when you get to the high tier abyss tried really hard to be able to use an MWD Gila for T6 Abyss, but it's not at all as reliable. Uh, it just uh, The capacitor fitting doesn't enable you to have a good capacitor in general, because you can't have the dual cap batteries, and then it just causes a whole lot of problems. It just fits so much better when you're using an afterburner. An afterburner can be very good when it comes to speed tanking as well, because even though an MWD goes faster, you still have a very big signature radius, so in some ways it can be easier to speed tank. Not always, but some can, sometimes it does feel a little bit safer when I'm using an afterburner. It could just be a bit of a placebo effect as well. Land one volley here. See what we get. We've had a really lucky drop so far. Imagine we got that three times. We were over 300 million just like that from one side. Absolutely crazy. Have we got any filaments? No, just unstable ballistic control system. That's what it was. We can get some sick ballistic control system rolls actually. Say we get we would have a C3-X, the one that buffs uh, drones and missiles. I think it would be crazily powerful if we were to get a good roll. That is, we could also just get a really bad one, and then you just get minus 50% or minus 30%. Uh, this is uh, with the shield extender. I think we can get worse rate of fire, and just brick our module. That would be unfortunate because not only do we lose the mutoplasm, but we also lose the module that we used to modify. Last wave, We've, we're under my, uh, five minute average time, that's really great. Powering Vedmac, oh, no problem, no problem. Let's just go for all these extraction nodes since we have plenty of time to spare. Uh, tanglers, good to go for them first since we're going to be going for a lot of extraction nodes just to prepare ourselves so that we can have maximum mobility. And then we'll just go for all these Vedmacs later. They'll go down super quickly because of our explosive damage. Let's take out all these tanglers because we do not need to be held in place. Come on, drones. Destroy them, yes. Great. So now we're taking full damage from the Vedmac fleet over here. But it shouldn't be much of an issue. We just uh, grind straight through their armor because they've got hardly any resist at all. You can see that just volleyed a quarter of their armor just like that. Oof, their armor is just going down so quickly. It's great to see. It feels almost like they're as weak as Fialtas cruisers just because of how much damage we're doing to them. The resists really play a big role in the T6 Abyss. Especially when you want to get as much out of the site as possible. Try to do it as quick as possible because time is of the essence here. I really appreciate these kinds of moments. Let's go. Ved Mac. <laughs> yeah, you see that? Each of only just 25% of his armor. Even more sometimes. And then structure just bam gone very quickly come on drones attack sometimes the vedmax actually can kite the drones it's very strange but they can actually sometimes kite the drones i've seen them do that before they just try to orbit them and try to attack them instead and the drones just like oh no i can't get to you please let me do damage and then they just get popped because they're you know, the vedmax is focusing on the drones they're sort of like trying to orbit the drone and they just get popped because of the transversal being so bad for them. 11 million. And then we've got this extraction node over here. Where is the bioadaptive? Bioadaptive is over there. Okay, I'll go for this Vedmac over here. Maybe we don't need to go for that extraction node because it's really far away. But then again, we do have the time, so we could go for it. We could go for it, actually. And this Vedmac, these Vedmacs, just no problem whatsoever. Just going straight through them like as if it's nothing destroyed and there's all the vedmax taken down now nah, it's just a bunch of damavix left we can actually launch a volley right here costing dama 
Oh, it could be that I've missed a lot of missiles because we had a ghost on the case all the time. No worries, no worries. Could this missile land? No, 27 kilometers need to be a bit closer. Just a bit closer. Easy, easy. <laughs> so the second room was not as profitable as the first, but still, I mean, 172 million is still really great to see. We'll see what we'll get in this third room right here. One of the best drops I got was like 200 million, multiple filaments, mutoplasmids from a single uh, buy and active cash. Really great to see. I mean, people complain that this is overpowered, and it is in some way overpowered. The thing is, you have to also remember that we've got like 6 billion isk worth of ship on the line right here. We've got implants and a ship. Easily gankable, very weak. A lot weaker than like, I was talking a few catalysts is all it takes really to gank this kind of ship right here. So there's definitely a risk involved and also a risk involved in the PvE if you make mistakes. Like I'm so used to this and it's also a really powerful ship. So there's not as much risk to get as maybe players, but still, if I had to just make a mistake, decide to just go outside the boundary, ship go bye-bye and that's all lost. So even though I think maybe the ISK we get right here is a bit overpowered, I do think that it is worth the stuff we put on the line. I remember that there was some post by a member of CCP, I think it was CCP Rye, said that in T5 Abyss like 98% of the runs are successful and uh, then that is, uh, means that they're overpowered. But the thing is, uh, okay, 35 million, pretty good. So we got 215 million isk from this whole run, that's really great, plus the blueprint here as well. A really great isk, really great isk. But what I was uh, going to say is that the CCP Rye said that there was such a high... Uh, likelihood of the T5 Abyss runners completing their sites. But I think that's also because the people doing the T5 Abyss, they're going to be using a very likely, very expensive ships. I think that if you want to think that, oh, how likely is it that someone completes the site, then you also want to look at how expensive the fits are. Because, I mean, obviously, if you're going to use, look at maybe, the, I think the majority of the T5 runners, they're using expensive ships. I mean, if you take the people using cheap ships, then I think that it could be that there's a lot lower likelihood of them completing the site and then I think it's a lot more worth it because then they will just be dying all the time so maybe they will complete it, maybe they don't otherwise when you're using crazily expensive ships that can be easily ganked I think that it is worth it but either way, now some quick isk right there just some quick isk <laughs> with the T6 Gamma Gila so powerful, so powerful hope you guys enjoyed if you did, please even like and subscribe I'll catch you guys later